What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to Boo TV. Back with that raw, unfiltered context. Everything put into its proper perspective. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get into the topic for today because this one irks me. Oh, this one irks me. This one irks me so much. The two-way player. The two-way player. When did this? When did this term get coined? I'm trying to remember. I feel like. They started saying two-way player when Kawhi Leonard really started to come on the scene and started drawing comparisons to LeBron James. And people were saying, hey, Kawhi might be the best player in the league. And then people would come back, well, Kawhi's a better two-way player than LeBron, but LeBron's a better player overall. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Since when, and, and it, for, first of all, if you don't know what the two-way player is, it is a player that is considered to be pretty good offensively, gives good uh, offensive production, and also good defensively or great defensively. This player, that's a two-way player, plays both sides of the ball very well. But this notion that you put them in a different category than another player or other players and label them a two-way player like they're on a different kind of grading scale is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Since when did defense not contribute to part of you as a player, as a, your overall game, right? If I have a player that is great offensively and great defensively, not a liability on defense, that contributes to the overall player. I'm not going to label him a two-way player. If there's another player that doesn't play good good defense, that is shit on D, then that's a strike against you. That's a, Defense is part of the game. There's another side of the floor that you have to be accountable for. If you're a complete liability on defense, that has just... That has an effect on the outcome of the game just as you would on the offensive end. As your skills will provide. What, what is this idea that people are getting a pass for defense and it's not getting marked against them? I understand the, the league now has changed over the years. Defense really isn't prioritized. It's harder to touch people up now. But that still doesn't mean you can't play good defense. You can't defense is 50% effort and like 50% smarts and defensive skills. 50% effort, then the other 50 is how smart are you defensively and how skilled are you de defensively. But a lot of it is effort. And players these days just don't put forth the effort. They don't. It's, it's, it's a, it's a jack-em-up, run to the three-point line, get it up quickly before the defense can, can even set up sometimes. They're hoisting up five threes already. But anyway... This notion that you're going to say LeBron's... I'm just throwing LeBron as an example, right? Because these are the names that get brought up in these debates for the best player in the league. You know, the LeBrons, the Giannis Antetokounmpo's, the Kawhi Leonard's when healthy. They're like, oh, yeah, LeBron's, yeah, but, you know, you know Kawhi's a two-way player. Giannis Antetokounmpo's a two-way player, but LeBron's better. But no. If LeBron, like I said, just using this as an example, as an example, uh, LeBron... At one point in his career, he was a great defensive player for a couple years there in Miami and maybe the last one or two years in Cleveland, but more so in Miami. But if, if it got player A, LeBron James as an example, is a, does not play defense, takes a lots of plays off. But I have another player, player B, that is exceptional defensively and exceptional offensively. That is an overall better player fuck calling him a two-way player defense is part of your game bro so if you can't play d then that's a strike on you two-way play it's it it blows my way and i really think that that word was created i really think they and i, I could be wrong i didn't go back and research it i could totally be wrong but i don't remember hearing it up until Kawhi leonard really started coming on the scene and people were trying to compare him to LeBron and would be like, oh, Kawhi is two-way, two two-way. 
know that means something. If I got a guy that can pin down another player, that I can assign to guard this team's best player and make it harder for him, make it harder for him to score, make him work more, that affects the game. That affects that player because that player is a monumental part of that team's success. But now we are limiting him or or making it harder for him and making him expend more energy. You are having a very positive effect on the game because of your defensive prowess. That is something that's accountable for. You look at Steph Curry, especially uh, in his first couple years, first several years, first several years in Golden State. Steph Curry was a liability on defense. And because he was a liability on defense, that affected the game. Remember, Steve Kerr would take Steph Curry out because he was getting cooked by other guards or whoever his assignment was. And and, and during key moments in the game um, where they needed defense, Steve Kerr would pull Curry out and then have to find a way to put him back in without having to spend a timeout to put him back in the game. And sometimes Steve Kerr had to use timeouts to get Curry back in the game after taking, taking him out on the defensive end because he needed more defense on the floor. That affects the game. You are a liability on defense. So you credit the players that actually play good defense and just don't call them a two-way player like it's something different. Like it's something different. No, that's part of your game. These, these 2K ratings, I tell you right now, these 2K ratings, they don't take defense into accountability. You got players rated 96 that are, that are, are players that are rated and they're horrible defenders. Horrible, horrible defenders. And they don't, they don't even take that into consideration. It, it blows, it blows my mind. And, and more kudos to the players that are able to score and get their points while expending all that energy on defense. You know how hard that is? Versus the player that, that takes plays off and doesn't play D and is only using his energy conservation for the offensive side of the ball. Shout out to the players in the history of the league that played, were still able to be you know, efficient and be an elite scorers while also being elite defenders at the same goddamn time. Do you know how much energy that takes out of your body? Playing both sides of the floor like that? You kidding me? Michael Jordan for the most of his career. Kobe Bryant for the most of his career. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Right? Kawhi Leonard. LeBron James had about LeBron James had about a five five to six year span where he where he was a, a prob, real problem defensively. He got started a little bit later on the defensive end. Uh, but we can throw LeBron James in there as well for when he was a force on both sides of the ball for the prime of his career. Absolutely. What did you do in your prime? Were you playing both sides of the ball? Because a lot of players weren't. That's why I look. That's why I look at the Jason Kidd. I'll take Jason Kidd over Steve Nash all day. Jason Kidd played both sides of the ball. I'm pretty sure. Would Jason Kidd have like ten, like eight, nine, ten all uh, NBA defensive selections? With a handful of those, with most of those being all NBA first time defense, Steve Nash was a lockdown defender, was getting hella rebounds as a small guard, and was also racking up the assists on both sides of the ball. Come on, man. We didn't call those boys two way players. That was part of their game. We evaluated them as it was as part of their game. Do you play defense or do you not? And that's why when I, when I look at you know these goat debates, you can't you can't be in my top ten if at no point in your career were you elite defensively, especially during your prime years. Did you contribute to the other side of the ball? Now there may be some exceptions for that. While Steph Curry was never. A good defensive player. And don't talk to me about how he led the league in steals one day. Cut that shit out. Please. Do, do, you, do you look at stats or do you watch basketball? Do you look at stats or do you watch basketball? He, he, a player getting two steals a game, but the rest of the game getting cooked. Their assignment cooking them. It's one thing to play the passing lanes. You know, you sneak off your defender. You see a pass probably coming. You cheat off your defender and go uh, go into the passing lane and strip the ball. That's one thing. But while you're getting those two steals a game, 
you're getting cooked on defense on the other on the other side of the ball. By 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 your uh, by your assignment, absolutely cooking you all night long. Now now your defense, your failure to play defense is causing all all kinds of problems. Now now your now your player your player with the ball has now gotten past you. Now he's going into the paint and creating problems. Now the next man has to slide over. The next man has to slide over, and then and they're whipping the ball around. And and they're now now the defense is scrambling to catch the guy with the ball, and there's an open man waiting, waiting for the right pass to come. Or slide to the basket for the for the easy dunk for the easy layup, your your inability to stay in front of your man is causing all sorts of other problems. That now we have to find ways to cover up for your inability to play defense. That's something else that Steve Kerr would constantly have to do: would find ways to cover up and hide Steph Curry on defense. So that 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 impacts the game, and it should be accounted for, and you should be accounted for. Now, Steph Curry. Right now, it's, we're going to do another video on this on where I have Steph Curry ranked. Right now, he's outside of my top 10. I have Curry somewhere between 11 and 15. But Curry, uh, if he continues at this pace, if he wins some more championships, uh, even with, with him being a complete liability and completely garbage on defense, uh, he still might be able to, to sneak into my top 10 just because of what he was able to do, uh, accomplishments um, overall. You know, I take everything into consideration. But it's going to be hard for any player to make it in my top 10 that – Defense wasn't a part of their game for at least the prime of their career. For at least the prime. Or or, or just maybe even just as long as you weren't a liability. If you weren't a liability on defense, you can make it in my top ten. If you weren't a liability. You know, some, some people were just average defenders. They were never elite. You know, Magic Johnson was an average defender. He was never elite, but he's in my top ten. But I will give more consideration to people that were elite defensively as well as being elite. Oh, that's one reason I put Kobe over Magic. Kobe did it on both sides of the ball at a very high level. At a very high level. A very high level. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't talk to me about the guy getting one or two blocks a game but getting cooked getting cooked the rest of the night. And you look at the boxer, oh, he got two steals. He's got to be good defensively. No, no, that's that's not what that that not that is not what that means. A steal is one part of defense. You know what I mean? That don't mean you're locking people up or you're staying in front of your assignment. Come on, man. It causes a breakdown on the defensive end, and that's how that's how people get open shots. People not knowing where they're supposed to be on defense or can't stay in front of their man. We all know. Steph Curry wasn't guarding Kyrie. That was Klay Thompson's assignment. Keep having to guard all these small guards. And they, they got to hide Steph elsewhere. Yeah. But that's just not picking on Curry. He's just an example of what I'm talking about. He, he, he's, he actually provides a good example for what I'm talking about. But, yeah, this, this whole notion of two, defense is, is part of your game. And that goes into the equation when I am evaluating you as an overall player. You know, player A scoring 35 points versus player B scoring 35 points, but player A is a being a complete savage on the defensive end gets an absolute nod. What you did, your 35 with a D is way better than this guy's 35 that didn't play any D. Get out of here with this, man. Uh, they be they be killing me two way. I don't. I hate that word. Oh, he's a two way player. No, he, he's 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 a, he's a great player. Because he plays great defense, but don't don't try to put this guy in a cat in a separate category, and like you can't compare the two because this guy's this guy's two way, but this guy's a better scorer, or a little bit better scorer. So you really can't compare the two. Yes, you fucking can. This guy doesn't play defense. This guy does, and they're both giving me scoring. Give me the guy that plays defense and gives me scoring over the guy that just gives me scoring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you want to bring up the word two-way player, don't bring it up in a negative connotation or to try to defend somebody that doesn't play defense. Use two-way to call somebody out that doesn't play defense. Say, this guy is not a two-way player. How about that? That's how we should be using it from now on. To call people out that's not playing defense. Damian Lillard, this guy's a horrible defender. Horrible. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, nobody ever talks about it. Of course they don't. They never bring it up. That's part of your game. It's absolutely part. We're going, we're going to do a video on Dame too. 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a video on Dame Dollar. Mm. And my issues with Dame Dollar. Mm. Mm -mm. But anyway, let me know what you think about it. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Go to war in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching. And that's going to end my rant on the two-way player. All right. Y'all be good. Catch you on the next one. We out, baby.